Fellow countrymen and women, lend me your ears. I'm here to bury Alan Onyema and not to praise him. The good deeds that men do live after them. So let it be with Alan Onyema. I know that that's a twist. The quote was kind of distorted to fit what I'm trying to project today. In the original quote, Shakespeare said, we're here to bury Caesar and not to praise him. The evil that men do live after them. So let it be with Caesar. However, it was a sarcastic announcement because they really didn't think in that setting that Caesar did any evil. And it's the same case that I feel today with Alan Onyema. However, because I've been inundated with messages, sarcastic messages, I must say, people sending me the news about Alan Onyema's new charges in Atlanta. I feel obligated to do this episode because it's my way of saying I'll present everything. It is my belief at this time that it is premature to have an opinion up or down on what's going on with Alan Onyama's case in Atlanta. What I can promise my viewers is that I'm going to follow that case to its, conclu to its conclusion. And if Alan Onyema is found guilty, I'm going to cover it just the way I cover every other crooked Nigerian business person. Up to this point, I haven't seen anything Alan Onyema did that is crooked. Everything I've seen and read about him has been upright and righteous. I say that to say that over the last few days, there was an explosion of negative headlines insinuating guilt on the side of Alan Onyema even before this case goes to trial. And that's why if you notice in my headline, it says Alan Onyema is guilty until the day he's proven innocent, if he turns out to be proven innocent. Any reporter of repute that has run with this case with the kind of headlines that have been surfacing across the media in Nigeria, both public mainstream media and social media, any person who has been carrying those negatively concocted headlines has an agenda and the agenda is simple our president is a convicted drug dealer our president is a certificate forger our president rigged an election our president is a land grabber in lagos our president if the courts in Lagos are fair and just, will be found guilty of diverting funds from Lagos state coffers to his family coffers. Those are either facts or provable facts if the justice system will do their work. That's why I thought that to do justice to both my viewers, and to the accused, I should surf the internet and try to find any credible information that has facts about what's going on so far. Everything I've seen is nothing but charges brought. And the 
only news organization that has really presented it for what it is, which is that charges are brought and we have to let the law take its full course, it's Arise TV. And to support that, I'm going to show you what Arise TV has on this case. But also remind you that the cheerleader for the speculation, negative speculation, is TVC. Who owns TVC? Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And if anybody can tell me one credible political news or witch hunting news that has come out of TVC that is nothing but a witch hunt, I'll be very happy to add it to my archives. And as a matter of fact, I had no plans to bring this up because the headline so far is nothing but an accusation. The good news is that this case is in America and that in Nigeria. So we know that if Onyema is guilty, he's going to pay the price and I'll be fully in support of him paying the price. But we also know that he has the money to buy the right lawyers. And if he's innocent, his lawyers are going to prove their case. Hello, everybody. Once again, this is Fred Wankwa coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Island TV. And as usual, I like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you are around the world. Over the weekend, news resurfaced about charges against Alan Onyema, the chief executive of uh, Airpeace in Atlanta, <clears throat> being a continuation of a 2018 case where there was a 36, 36 count charge against him and he beat the charges. And now an Atlanta court has added two more charges to the original 36, now making it 38, and saying they found more evidence for reasons why there should be money laundering charges against Allen Onyema. I <coughs> chose to be silent on that case until all the facts come out. I'm breaking that silence because I've been inundated with messages and calls and inboxes of that case, basically with the subtle message of saying, you went after Tinubu very aggressively. Here comes a case with Alan Onyema. We expect you to do the same. And I guess because the people who are sending me those things feel that I'm an evil person and my reports against Bola Ahmed Tinubu is based on tribalism. Nothing could be farthest from the truth. The facts are clear. But because of that, I thought I'll handle this Alex, uh, Alan Onyema case as aggressively as I handled the Tinubu case. With that said, how aggressively can this case be handled? There is nothing there, at least yet. And anybody who sees otherwise has an agenda. And I have other things to talk about today. But I wanted to lead with Alan Onyema because I don't want to be accused of burying the Alan Onyema, um, burying the Alan Onyema case in the back while I'm talking about other things that obviously I haven't talked about Tinubu a lot lately, but today I'm going to reintroduce issues about Tinubu. But for now, I just want you to listen to a piece from Arise TV 
on Oji Okbe Show. And I've scouted the internet, I've surfed all over the internet, YouTube, to find video talking about the case against Alan Onyema with substance. The best I've found is this Arise TV piece. And I'll play it for you, give my opinion on it, and go on to what I want to talk about today. Well, all right, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Over the weekend, social media was abuzz with reactions trailing a report by the U.S. Department of Justice indicating that the chairman of Air Peace Airlines, Dr. Alan Unyama, and the chief of finance and administration, Ejiro Igaga, had been charged with alleged obstruction of justice. Air Peace, however, in a statement on Sunday, denied any wrongdoing by its chairman and chief of finance and administration. The company reaffirmed the innocence of both executives, saying that they are confident that they will be exonerated, while emphasizing that the charges were mere allegations with the case ongoing in court. The company also reiterated that Dr. Onyema and his legal representatives have consistently cooperated with relevant authorities throughout the legal process. While well, the statement reads in part, These charges levied against our post holders are part of an extended legal process stemming from earlier accusations of financial misdeeds that date back several years. While the charges have been expanded, it is essential to emphasize that both Dr. Onyema and Ms. Egaga remain innocent and these are mere allegations and the case is still in court. Our legal team is fully engaged with the matter and is working tirelessly to ensure that justice prevails. We remain confident that through due process, the truth will be revealed and our CEO and co-defendant will be exonerated. Because it's a legal issue, I'd love to um, hand over the baton to you. Okay. I know that Dr. Onyema had stated in his previous response back in 2019 about these money laundering charges, that he was innocent of the crime and that he didn't have anything to do with those charges. Okay, let me piggyback on your point about media trial. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, I mean, I, I felt a bit uncomfortable that the Nigerian media seems to have uh, jumped to a conclusion. And this is what we do all the time, Nigerian journalists. They hear a story that is juicy, sensational, they jump on it without hearing the other side. And I think that uh, Nigerian journalists should desist from this media witch hunting, you know, of persons, particularly a person like Mr. Uh, Alenu Yema who, in fact, during the Yaradua administration, was a major architect of the non-violent program leading to the amnesty program, training about 30,000 persons in the Niger Delta region and helping them, you know, through the contract that he got from the federal government, you know, to protect, save, secure the country. Mr. Alan Oyema, in another occasion, has also proved to be a major patriot you know, during uh, the COVID crisis that we had in 2020, 2021, ferrying people from South Africa uh, during uh, COVID from other parts of the world, and even when Nigerians had issues in South Africa. In other words, you will expect that the Nigerian media, these same journalists, you know, who jump on sensational stories, will at least try to exercise a little caution. Now, let's go back to 2019. In 2019, Mr. Aleo Yema and Epis had made it very clear that, look, those allegations are not true, that he never intended to do any money laundering and he was not involved in any money laundering. And that the money that they are talking about, you know, was passed through even the banking system in the United States. So where is the fraud? Where is the money laundering? However, the latest development is that the 36 charges in uh, uh, 2019, they've added two charges uh, to it in Georgia. And they say, okay, additional two charges relating to, according to them, Mr. Onyema and also uh, uh, Mrs. Ehaha. I think that's the name, Egaga, Ehaha. Now, you know, they now say that two charges have been added um, coming to uh, 38. I, I think that if you check it, well, this is a 
kind of mis misunderstanding between two jurisdictions. Because the aircraft, the five aircraft that are at issue in this particular case, they are flying in Nigeria. They are here. They are operational. So I think that these are the, some of the issues uh, that we need to look at. And Nigerians should not jump uh, to conclusions. These are issues that the lawyers can, you know, resolve. Enu Aligi, Anko, Onyema's lawyers, they issued a statement once, if I recall, mm -hmm. saying that, look, nobody lost any money in, this, uh, in these transactions. Not the United States, not any individual party lost uh, any money, and that is uh, much ado about nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, more work, it may appear, between uh, for Alegi and Co and across jurisdictions. But it's not a thing that, you know, the media will just say, uh, oh, this is a juicy story. Mm -hmm. There was virtually almost no platform, uh, you know, that didn't carry that story. Where I, I don't think I saw it on the Arise News, but, you know, no. uh, yeah, all the uh, stations, they were feeding on it. Mm -hmm. I said, can we also, you know, protect our own? Mm -hmm. Because I, Alan Onyema is one of the shining lights that we have in this country. Uh, regardless without prejudice as they say in law to whatever the americans they say they are pursuing absolutely but let us be fair okay. and look at both sides of the story audi Autumn pattern, pattern, they say. Hear right. both sides of the story right. before you begin to jump to conclusions. On the issue of the arrest warrant, I believe that that had been debunked. I don't think that there were any issues for arrest warrants. But let me read the statement that was issued back in 2019 in his response to the first indictment five years ago. Alan Onyema had made it clear that he never laundered money or ever intended to do that. He wondered how funds from bank loans and proceeds from ticket sales could be bad money to be laundered. That was his statement back in 2019. Again, I would reiterate your point, Dr. Abati, which I think was quite excellent. We must avoid this media trial. They are, according to the Department of Justice, innocent until proven guilty in court. Folks, there you have it. <clears throat> innocent until proven guilty. How? I mean, just looking at logic, I'm not saying in the end, Alain Onyema may not be uh, found guilty, but I'm saying looking at logic, how does monies that went through the normal channels of banking loans, went through the normal channels of banking in America, and money is collected from ticket sales. How do you turn around and say that those, those are monies being laundered? Let's add one plus one. <clears throat> Alan Onyema launched the airpiece route from Lagos to Gatwick. In the process of doing that, he also felt that the prices were ridiculous that's being charged to Nigerians, not to Igbos, to Nigerians, Biu, Yoruba, Hausa, Fulani, Edo, and he slashed prices and made it more economical for Nigerians to fly between Lagos and London. Everybody celebrated, at least celebrated at least everybody in good conscience, not the people with an agenda. Along those lines, the airlines, KLM, British Airways, all of them, Lufthansa, that have been ripping off Nigerians for decades, found themselves scampering to match his prices or beat his prices, which is not very profitable for them then they made it difficult for him to land and give good customer service to his customers in the process of landing in London. Against all odds, he kept pushing on. Is it really unfounded to think that whatever Atlanta is bringing up is either 
related to trying to protect their price gouging partners in London? Or could it be in anticipation of the fact that Airpiece may be getting a license to start flying into New York or Atlanta and they are trying to protect the Delta market? and any other American airlines that fly. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying for the people who were inboxing me like gotcha, here is an Igbo man. Folks, let me make one thing clear to you. And Igbos who know me and the ones, Igbos who are tribalistic, actually think I'm not Igbo enough because I stand up to defend the position of Nigeria. Sometimes when they think it's all about Biafra, 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 I am fully in support of getting Biafra if Nigeria will not be fair to Igbos. However, as long as we are still in Nigeria, I defend the position of Nigeria to the point where some Igbos feel that I'm not Igbo enough because I argue in defense of Nigeria. So for any Yoruba person who thinks that my reports on Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is a drug dealer, it's clear he was indicted. He paid fines for it. He's a drug dealer. He's a usurper of Lagos funds. The records are there. Gani Fawahimi fought to bring them out, but he didn't get the cooperation he needed. And if you think that I'm going to come and balance my argument against the dirt of Bola Ahmed Tinubu and create dirt to balance it out in the Igbo land, you must be out of your mind. But I will follow this Allen Onyema case very attentively and very aggressively. And if he's guilty, I'm going to report it very aggressively. But I'm not going to find a man guilty because it's convenient to balance my story between Bola Ahmed Tinubu and charges brought against somebody who hasn't been found guilty. And for the Yoruba people who are so concerned about my reports on Tinubu and so gung-ho to defend him, it's a shame that you are not that gung-ho about finding out what happened to Funsha Williams. It's a shame that you are not gung-ho about finding out what happened to a favorite son of Yoruba land, Bolaige, the Attorney General of Nigeria and Minister of Justice. At the time, he was brutally assassinated in his bedroom. Neither Fonsha Williams nor Bolaige was killed by an Igbo person. Neither Funsha Williams nor Bolaige was killed by an Aosa man or an Edo man or a Fulani man or an Ibibio man. Funsha Williams and Bolaige were killed by Yoruba people. It's not too late. I'd like to see Yoruba bigots develop the same kind of zeal they spend in defending a drug dealer, an election rigger, a certificate forger. I'd like to see you use the same zeal to aggressively try to seek out who killed Bolaige and who killed Funsha Williams and who paid the people who killed Bolaige and who killed Funsha Williams. Everything I've reported about Bola Ahmed Tinubu is well researched. He's a drug dealer. He's a certificate forger. He grabs lands in Lagos. He rigged his way into office. 
He's spreading tribalism in Nigeria, knocking heads, divide, dividing and conquering Nigeria. Those are facts. So why can't I report them? With that said, for all the bigots who don't understand why people like me continue to bring the heat on the drug dealer called our president, let me just give you two separate sound bites, one from Alaji Galadima and the other one, very short sound bite from Aisha Yesufu. People are hungry. Let them die. It's their fault. Yeah, I'm supporting Tinubu 100%. You're supporting Tinubu? 100% mm. to deal with Nigerians. Jeez. People like you. So that when elect, next election come, mm. I will now see whether when people bring money, you will vote for them. Either you voted or you did not vote. We have a president, isn't it? No, but we don't. We do have a president. No, you have a president. I don't have a president. What do you mean? Uh, you are a citizen of Nigeria. Yeah, and you reside here. Yeah, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. I reside here. But we have an illegitimate president. Someone who rigged his way into office. It's like if there's a military coup, are you going to sit down and accept that, oh, you have a president because someone, you know, there was a military coup? But you this can, is a political you, you coup. You cannot say that because I you do can, not have I, evidence. Aisha Yesufu yeah. can and have said that Nigeria does not have a president. What we have is someone who rigged this way into office who is illegitimately but occupied the court does office. not agree with that's your position your the court that has been captured can do whatever it wants to do and that's why there's no respect for it and that's why you have governors you know coming out to tank a tenubu when their the judgment goes their way so the fact that they, we have a captured judiciary and whatever i aisha yusufu and i say it without mincing what i don't put water for my mouth there's no precedent in nigeria there's a president for ebola for tenubu you, factually for the former governor of the, a Lagos state, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, yes, is illegitimately occupying an office in Shodin. And I've said it. You, do you have your opinion, Shodin? I have my own. So why does he have to... No, there is a fact. There is a fact there is an opinion. No, then go ahead with your own fact. This is mine. This is my reality. And I'm telling you, Nigeria doesn't have... Why is it difficult there. for you to accept that? Why should this, I accept In the next four years... It's No, hold on. Hold on, Shehu. Someone comes to my house, steals my car, take it away, repaints it, and you're telling me that I have to accept it because it's been repented and well, you cannot papers prove it. For it you cannot well, prove that, that, that you, the, the proven or not the proven that's not the point this is what i'm saying to you Shewu. Mm. this is aisha telling you that nigeria does not have a president if you Shewu believes that nigeria has a president go ahead we're stopping you so folks there you have it i know you don't like me saying that bola Tinubu is illegitimate i know you want me to say that Alan Onyema is a money launderer. I brought you what I brought you. You make up your mind. I will follow the Alan Onyema case very closely. And now to the main reason why I decided to do this case today. A young Yoruba man, a friend of mine in Chicago, really respects me sent me a message this morning and followed up with a voice note on the Allen of Nyema case. The message was in Yoruba. He spoke to me in Yoruba, but I'll translate what he said. He said, Egmo Fred, which is big brother Fred, you are the one who people watch what you're doing. So far, you have aggressively followed all these matters. I haven't found anything substantial on this Onyema case. I know that you are in a position to find something. And it's incumbent on you to follow this case and bring us what the facts are. Because... I want you to be the one who shuts it down or brings the facts about his guilt to the people so that people will know that you are balanced. I know you are balanced. I follow you, Egmont Fred. But I know a lot of people 
who would like to claim you are being tribalistic. And I know you are not. That's why I sent you that inbox. It touched me that a young man, at least 20 years younger than me, really looks out for me, covers my back. And I'm concluding on that note to tell people that Yorubas are not bigots. There is a segment of Yorubas that have been deadly bigoted lately. We must not paint with a broad brush. Just like you have Igbos who are bigoted and you have Igbos who are cabal pocketed, but you still have good Igbos. And in the issues we have with our brothers and sisters in Yoruba land, we should see ourselves for who we are. Just the way I see my young friend for who he is, regardless of my position on Yoruba bigots, I know that I could count on him that he's not bigoted. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Fred Monko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. And until next time, good night and God bless.
Yeah.